What a nice day here in downtown Denver. We're at Coors Field for Cubs baseball on WGN Sports. Rubber game today. The Cubs try to get over 500 as they wrap up this weekend series. Great to have you with us, Jim Deshays, Len Casper. The Cubs busted out the bats uh, with a 9-5 uh, win last night over the Rockies. Good to see Dexter Fowler really get it going. Yeah, returning to Colorado for the first time on Friday. He struggled, took an offer, but yesterday really had a nice ball game. Uh, got things started in the first inning. Very first pitch of the ball game, he whacks it into the alley in left center for a leadoff. Triple came around and scored next time up. Why not do it again? This time he hooks it into the right field corner. So back-to-back -back triples and consecutive at-bats for Fowler. And that's something he did a lot of when he was a member of the Colorado Rockies actually led the league in triples on one occasion quite frequently was among the league leaders so last night two out of three walked a couple of times scored two drove into to go along with those two three baggers yeah it also helps when the the table setters get on base for the guys in the middle and that was the kind of offensive night the Cubs envisioned hopefully happening a lot yeah they did a lot of good things they slugged yesterday they worked five walks they had a couple hit batters so they had traffic uh, all night long you see the Cubs struggling the first three games of the season but more typical output as what you would expect here at Coors Field in the ball game yesterday so when we come back, we'll talk about the pitching matchup. Couple of young right-handers, Kyle Hendricks, will make his season debut coming up. the hard way this bucks for you Honda dream garage sales event now it's your Honda dealer Napa home of Napa know-how Ford America's best-selling brand inviting you to go further in our fuel efficient vehicles check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at local Fordstores.com. Subway make a smart play for savory subs this season Score more flavor at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Well, right-hander Kyle Hendricks, major league career still uh, in its early stages, only 13 starts last year, but uh, he doesn't 
act like a young kid who's only 25, does he? No, he's very confident on the mound. There's absolutely no panic at all. We saw that in his start against the Rockies here last year. He pitched well just about every time he took the ball for the Cubs last year, but I don't know if there was a better performance from Kyle Hendricks than what we saw here at Coors Field. A rookie in this ballpark, you think maybe the panic button would be pushed? Not the case with Hendricks. Solid, outstanding performance. Eight innings against the Rockies here last year. He allowed five hits, only one earned run, one walk. That was the key. He doesn't walk people, and he struck out four. Jordan Lyles uh, made his big league debut actually against the Cubs. He was only 20, so he's younger than Kyle Hendricks, but a lot more experienced. And he's been around for a few years now, but just 24 years of age. Seven and four last year. His season cut short due to a, due to a hand injury. Uh, a winner in his first start against the Brewers last time out. Cubs head home. They'll take on the Reds and the Padres this coming week. But first things first. And last night, the Cubs with consecutive home runs actually hit three in the ball game in their second win of the season. They'll try to get over 500 coming up Cubs and Rockies next. Your home for the most live sports. Let's look at our Gander Mountain game time weather 68 degrees. Windy here today, low humidity, partly cloudy. All in all, a very nice day to play. We'll see how this ballpark plays with the wind blowing the way it is. It appears to be, feels like it's blowing in a little bit, but maybe swirling, pushing it out towards right. Brought to you by Gander Mountain. Low price every day, guaranteed. Kyle Hendricks, terrific in that start last year here. Had a nice spring. Hasn't worked in a while. It was uh, last weekend, Saturday, an inning in Arizona. So make his 2015 debut here today. And let's check out the Cubs batting order. It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. The former Rocky Dexter Fowler with a big night last night. Anthony Rizzo is going to hit second for the first time since spring training. Jorge Soler will bat third. Chris Coughlin cleaning up for the first time in his major league career. Starlin Castro at short. Miguel Montero the catcher. Alcantara is at second and he's going to hit seventh. The pitcher Hendricks eighth. And Jonathan Herrera gets his first start as a Cub. He'll bat ninth. And as we take a look at the uh, Rockies defensively, you'll note that Troy Chulowitzki is getting a day off today. Daniel Descalso, the former Cardinal utility guy, can play all over, will fill in at short today. He's joined on the infield by Aaron Nato, the Gold Glover, LeMayhew, the Gold Glover, Justin Morneau at first. Michael McHenry, the backup catcher, gets the assignment today. The outfield, Dickerson, Blackman, and Gonzalez. He also is a former Gold Glove winner. And on the mound for the Rockies this afternoon is Jordan Lyles, 24-year-old right-hander, 6'4", 215 last year. Uh, out a bunch of time uh, due to a broken left hand. And he finished with a 7-4 record of 4.33 ERA, making 22 starts for the Rockies. His first year in a Rocky uniform after being traded from the Astros. 
for Dexter Fowler. Who will lead off. Of all the connections, Eric Cooper gets the play today. Drake Walcott and the crew chief Cedarstrom on the base is very windy uh, here today. So we'll see how that affects things. Light air versus the wind blowing in. And it may swirl in this. Yeah, this it looks like it, might, it may push it out towards right a little bit, but it kind of feels like it's going to knock the ball down, uh, certainly the ball towards the left field. So those flags aren't lying, and sometimes they do lie. Of course, Lyles is uh, an extreme ground ball pitcher. Hendricks is more of a ground ball type pitcher as well. So here we go. Lyles to Fowler. Strike one to get us started. Three hits on the year for Fowler, all of the extra base variety, a double and two triples. He said he was pretty gassed here in the light air after running out those three base hits. He flies out to Blackman to start the ball game. Cubs bench is short today. Mike Olt feeling better. That's great news after he got hit by a pitch on the right wrist last night. I doubt we would see him uh, at any point today. Also, Tommy LaStella uh, dealing with some soreness in his uh, side, kind of that oblique area, uh, would be available to pinch hit, but wouldn't be a bit surprised if we see Travis Wood get an at bat today at some point. One and oh on Anthony Rizzo. He's got two hits and he's been hit four times. So the ball has hit him more often than he's hit the ball safely. <laughs> well, <clears throat> crowds the plate. He's big and strong. They try to jam him. That's a good change up there from Lyles. Lyles has changed his game a little bit. When he first came to the big leagues, he a lot of four seam fastballs and a very sharp curveball. He still has those pitches in his arsenal, but using the two seam fastball more frequently now, as well as the change up and the slider. Foul tipped into the mitt for his first strikeout. Two down here in the Cubs first. Nice work there by Lyles. Going soft with the changeup and then elevating the fastball to beat Rizzo. And top out around 95 miles an hour. We'll sit comfortably around 92. Looking now to Solaire. Similar pitch and a cut and a miss. 28 major league games for Solaire coming in today. 291 for his batting average, slugging over 550. He's continuing his fine work from his days in the minor leagues. Since he signed with the Cubs, he's only played about 200 games. So his. Pro career here in the state, still in its infant stages, so to speak. One and two. I think he liked that call. No, I didn't like it either. <laughs> Hence the wow. I thought you were wowing my story. <laughs> wow. Two and two. Coglin on deck. He has a mature game, though, despite the lack of experience in the big leagues. Arenado will get him and a quick one, two, three for Lyles. Kyle Hendricks takes the ball when we come back.
Five defeat last night. They're going to hit the road after today. Blackman, Gonzalez, Arenado at the top. Morno, Dickerson, McHenry with his first action of the season. Uh, in the middle, Descalzo, the pitcher hitting eight for the second time in the series, and DJ LeMay, who really doing it all against his former team. Cubs in the field this afternoon. Coglin, Fowler, Solaire, left center, right. Jonathan Herrera gets his first start. Versatile guy, can play all over the infield. Castro Alcantara up the middle. Big Riz at first, Miguel Montero behind the plate, and Kyle Hendricks, 60 feet, six inches away, ready to go here. Seven and two last year with a 2.46 ERA and 13 big league starts. Herrera in at third against Charlie Blackman. Ball one, 90 miles an hour. That's about as hard as you'll see Hendricks throw. We'll get the connections out of the way right off the bat. He went to high school with Tyler Matzik, who started for the Rockies on Friday. And Hendricks' catcher when he was at Dartmouth was Chris O'Dowd, the son of the uh, Rockies' former general manager, Dan O'Dowd. Two balls and a strike. On the ground, backhanded play, Alcantara, and he just couldn't get a handle on it on the exchange from Glove to throwing hand. It'll be a hit for Blackman. A good decision ultimately by Alcantara not to try to throw the ball after he doesn't get a good grip on it. We got to there's a chance you're going to sail that ball into the stands if you try to make that throw. It'll go as an infield hit. Alcantara made a throwing error in the ball game yesterday. He also made a couple of very nice plays. Blackman a threat to run. Carlos Gonzalez, normally not quiet against the Cubs, but one for nine so far in the series. And with no Tulowitzki today. To get out of here with cargo not getting hot. Problem is, a lot of other guys in this lineup are hot. Arenado, Dickerson, LeMahieu, Tulowitzki, all with hits in each of the first five games. Swing and a miss. Outside. Two balls and a strike. Hendricks like Kendrick the starting pitcher for the Rockies here yesterday not a guy who strikes out a lot so he figured this would be a tough ballpark for him but as we showed you earlier he really pitched well in his start here last year he doesn't walk many it's a tremendous feel for pitching last ball sits right around 88 miles an hour but every now and then he'll rush it up there 91 92 just trying to stay away from cargo trying to Find that release point to get that two seam fastball over that outside edge and down. Great change up. A little cutter and a curve as well. Gonzalez bounced it off his own foot. Hendricks ERA at Dartmouth was almost five. Over three seasons there. His minor league numbers 2.69 for the ERA here at the big league level 248. That's not that surprising when you get to know Kyle Hendricks that he's actually gotten better as the competition's gotten more difficult and he just picked off Blackman. Yeah, I think, you know, he just he's one of those guys that because of his acumen as a pitcher, you know, the more he's around the game, the more he's going to pick up. And at the big league level with all the uh, advanced scouting information. Available to you, you know, he's a guy who can really take full advantage of that. Good quick feet. Blackman erased. Topper to Rizzo and the flip to Hendricks in time. 
Love to see your uh, cup selfies. We'll use them in our fan cam a little later on today. Hashtag WGN Cubs. That is not a selfie, by the way. We don't think. Cute dog, though. No. I, think, I mean, another dog took that picture. Here's uh, Nolan Arenado. And lines one to Soler for the out. Single, no runs. Scoreless after an inning. Welcome back, everybody. Scoreless after one. Cup fans, if you want to manage the game along with Joe Madden, log on to WGNTV.com right now. Click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner where you'll connect to all the up-to-the-minute stats and information while you watch from home. Game Zone is sponsored by the Great Escape, tools, patio furniture, hot tubs, and more. Everything you need to have more fun at home this summer. Chris Coughlin hit the Cubs first home run of the season last night. He gets to play cleanup man today. Although leadoff hitter here in the second. First time in his major league career he's ever started a game batting fourth. So the only spot. In which he has not been slotted is the nine spot. Three balls, no strikes. And three switch hitters in the lineup for Joe Madden today, as well as three straight left handed hitters. Present some matchup problems for Walt Weiss later in the game, perhaps. And a leadoff walk. The fans, let's go. The 2015 Cubs look to make some noise at Wrigley Field. They will get noisy tomorrow. It's a three game set with the Reds starting tomorrow night, off day Thursday. Then the Padres in for the weekend. Tickets are still available for every one of those ball games. Get your tickets at Cubs.com. Mike Leak and John Lester tomorrow night. The Reds are tied with the Cardinals at home 5 5 as they play the bottom of the ninth. In Cincinnati. Low on Starlin Castro. He homered yesterday. One of his three hits. He's got a 13 game hitting streak dating back to last year. A couple 
infield hits for Castro yesterday to go along with this large fly. Look out. Almost hit him. Scuffling with his command here. Lead off walk. And throw that runner in on Castro. Indeed, he got it in. But he's behind in the count 2 0. Pretty good triple fastball hitter. Let's see how they decide to attack him here. Wiles is from a state I've never visited. South Carolina, Hartsville. He's a, an outstanding football player in high school, recruited by the University of South Carolina. Wide out in high school. Speaking of South Carolina, Chris DeNorfia joining the Myrtle Beach Pelicans for a rehab assignment. Chopper to third as Coggin was on the move. Arenado's throw beats Castro by two steps. That's a gold glove play. A two time winner. Because of uh, Lyle's ground ball tendencies, I think we'll see Joe Madden start some base runners here today as he does in this instance. Stays out of the double play, although that would not have been an easy play to turn to. Arenado, boy, he's really <laughs> slick down there, isn't he? He sure is. Rockies fans are at the point where they just expect him to to make that play every time. And by and large he does. Montero looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 8 to start the year. Kenner's got to be careful here. He's going to run out of timeouts. Man on second base. Making sure they're on the same page. Nick Hundley had caught every inning of the Rockies' first five games. Maybe this will be a good matchup for Miguel. He's seven out of 14 against Lyles. Drives that ball out into the alley. That's his first hit of the year, and it's going to drive in a run. Coglin scores. It's a double for Montero, and he's now eight for 15 against Lyles. One nothing Cubs. That great swing of the bat here by Montero. Looked like they were trying to go in, and a two seamer got a good portion of the plate. The leadoff walk pays off. Well, Contra has turned 0 for 9. He has walked four times. This is his fourth start, all at second base. And a strike call. Hendricks is on deck. Quick word from the manager. Mayhew will get out Contra. Montero advances to third, two outs. Kyle Hendricks was uh, spending a lot of time on the computer uh, earlier in this series, maybe getting ready for today. Let's hear from his manager. Well, I, I really believe he could pitch well in a, in a phone booth. I, I mean that. He's, he's such a, a 
precision kind of a pitcher with good stuff. I think everybody looks at him as being a command kind of guy, but they overlooked that his stuff's real good too. And um, so, yeah, I mean, when he's executing his pitch as well, it doesn't matter where he's pitching. Kyle Hendricks back to the mound with a one nothing lead coming up. Because Wikipedia is always right. It's, it's never wrong. I think he was just researching. Uh, I think it was uh, something to do with the, the Flatirons and Chinook winds, I think, were the two big topics today. And Michael Scott swears that if it's on Wikipedia, it must be true. And Kyle studying these Rockies hitters yesterday in preparation for today's start. Cubs lead 1 0. This is battery mate with an RBI double. Morno, Dickerson, and McHenry for the Rockies. Oh, he'd love to live there all day. Mm -hmm. Cutter there at 90, so he goes two seamer away, then change up, then cutter. Moves the ball all over the strike zone, gives the hitter a lot to think about. I was going to say, it feels like, and he's already gotten a couple of swings and misses on what looked to be hittable pitches, but just keeping guys off balance, right? Yeah. Castro to Rizzo for the out. Yeah, if you establish that you have command of your uh, secondary pitches early, and, and, you know, and that's the reputation. So you, he, the reputation he has, the hitters come into a game aware of the fact that he's got a real good change up, a real good command. So they're telling themselves, he's not going to blow it by me, stay back, stay back. And with that mindset, that fastball becomes a little bit more effective. Dickerson off to a really good start. Eight hits, two homers, two doubles. Nine knocked in already. I've seen him very good the other way. That's his natural stroke. And he has power the other way. And maybe the strategy here is to start away, work away, get him leaning and looking that way, and then try to jam him. Comes the 1 1. Change up missed outside. Right 
back with that changeup, and that's that's a good adjustment. And I didn't finish the previous one, left it up. A lot of times, that's the, the best thing to do is to call it again. Best time to make that adjustment is right after you made a bad one. And there's the jam. If you're a fan of pitching, the art of pitching, the in and out, a little off, a little on. Kyle Hendricks is the guy to watch because he can execute that game plan. Got away from him. And it's three and two. McHenry is on deck. He did duty last year. A great offensive season. The line drive base hit the other way. With Dickerson. Hey Cup fans, make sure you check out Lennon JD's baseball blog at WGNTV.com. Sponsored by Jeff Vukovic, your nationwide insurance agent, serving the area for 37 years. To join the nation, contact Jeff at JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Henry in his second stint with the Rockies. First year back last year hit 315. 57 games got on base a lot hit for power. Comes a double play depth. And the pitch inside for a ball. Tigers won again, eight to five at Cleveland. Miguel Cabrero went four for four with two home runs. He's hitting 520. Ian Kinsler is at 440. Juana Cespedes 321. Jose Iglesias hitting 526. It's been a good week for the Tigers. Who are six and zero. Oh. Up the middle and through for a base hit. Dickerson's going to stop at second. Well, you uh, alluded to it uh, last night. Ball's really moving quickly through the infield. Yeah, yeah. I would argue that because of the conditions here, they should grow that infield grass really high to give the pitchers a little bit of a break. But everything about this field. Favors the hitters. Well, Hendricks got his ground ball, it just wasn't where anybody could make a play on it. And we've got to try to get another one with Descalzo up there. It's most of spring training with an oblique injury. Descalzo, a familiar name to Cub fans after five years with the St. Louis Cardinals. A lot of different defensive positions. And is it short today for Tulowitzki? Hooked foul. It's Friday. The Reds are in town. First pitches at 120. First 10,000 fans at the ballpark will receive a Cubs winter aviator hat presented by Pepsi. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. You can wear it in the spring and summer, though. It'll be the Padres and Cubs Friday. Friday, oh, yeah. This is the Padres. We need to change the copy. The Reds first. Tap foul. Yeah, I'm sure the Cubs like seeing Troy Tulowitzki not in the Rockies lineup. I guess the, the only downside is late in the game. Walt Weiss 
I'm sure can find a, a spot to drop him in as a pinch hitter. If needed. Tulowitzki's had a fair number of injury problems over the last couple of years, so sense of Walt Weiss would want to give him a day off from time to time. And early in the year, you want to get your bench players some starts. You want to, you know, they've had a lot of at bats during spring training. You don't want them to get rusty. Give them a chance to to get into the flow of the season. Yeah, Joe Madden uh, referenced Sunday Charlie. <laughs> We're talking with him today. Charlie Maxwell. Sunday punch. Sunday Charlie, the Sabbath smasher, his propensity to hit home runs on Sunday. And he was not just a part time player. And Charlie's still around. He lives in Sarasota, Florida. And I guess Joe had referenced him in one of his pregame chats with the media while with the Rays and got a note from Mr. Maxwell. Played a long time in the American League. Right back to uh -huh. Hendricks, and he could not flag it down. Everybody's safe. Goes from a possible double play to end the inning to bases loaded with only one out. Yeah, Awkward trying to reach back across his body. Probably should have just let, let it go. That was a double play ball for sure. We'll bring out the pitching coach, Chris Basio. See where Castro's position there. That's an easy double play ball. Kyle just lets it pass by. Base is loaded, one out. He's got the pitcher up there in Lyles, who handles the bat pretty well. We talked about his athletic ability earlier. Yeah, so uh, Sunday Charlie. Yeah, 1959, he hit a home run in four straight at bats in a doubleheader on Sunday. That was with the Tigers and then with the White Sox. Five of his nine home runs in 1962 came on Sunday and he hit three on a doubleheader in July that year. So, yeah, Sunday Charlie. I like that for a guy getting a rare start, even though, again, he, he was uh, an all star on a couple of occasions. But we've got our Sunday Charlie lineup. Well, Coomer had a good line, though. He said, well, for a lot of us, you got to hit a few more home runs on other days of the week too to stay, Can't just stay in the pitch. game by being good on Sunday. Right. <laughs> and he did. Sunday, Charlie was, yeah. was was good. But you don't see that much anymore. You, you know, Jim Leland used to do it. And other managers back in the day. Sunday was kind of the day where they'd empty the bench. All their backup guys would get starts. Especially if you had one of your better pitchers on the mound. Turn it over to your A thing. We'll get us a W. Not to say that those bench guys wouldn't produce. So pitcher batting eighth in both lineups. So it's Lyles in this spot. I think Hendricks would like to induce contact. He can get a double play ball. And I don't know if Lyles is going to actually uh, swing the bat here. One swing so far. In this sequence. Tap foul. Not a bad hitter, 150 in his career with two home runs. Yeah, so uh, yeah, as you would expect with the opposing pitcher up there, the outfield is, is shortened up some, especially on, in center field on the offside and right field. You got to be careful on this ballpark because Lyle's a pretty strong guy. If he's able to split the gap or hit one over your head, he's going to clear the bases and drive in three. 
Once he dumps it in front of you, he's likely to drive in too, and that's that's the challenge playing in this big yard. So Montero requested time. Three consecutive hits. Rockies threatening. Popped up. Infield fly rule in effect, so Lyles already is out. Two away. Now the Cubs trying to figure out DJ LeMay, who's six out of eight in the series. He's got 11 hits this week. They're all singles. A single here would give his team the lead. Yeah, most of it's just right back through the middle of the, of the diamond. And hitting ball hard, hitting it on a line. Off to a great start, 11 out of 21. Strike offering. Foul pop and no play for Montero. Jason Hamill admitted that to Montero was very aggressive in his pitch calling last night. Basically told Jason, this is how we're going to do it. He told a story to reporters today before the game. He once said something to Randy Johnson when he was a young catcher. About the pitch calling that he kind of regretted, but the unit eventually said, Yeah, you were right. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, Johnson felt like they were throwing too many sliders, and Montero responded with, You got to quit hanging. Nice. <laughs> and after the game, unit went up and said, Yeah, yeah you're right. That's part of the reason why he's here. Got a great reputation, a good pitch, pitch framer, a good game caller. Coglin in left center can't get it. It's going to clear the bases. Dickerson in. McHenry scores. It's a triple. The Scalzo run number three. It's now three to one. All right, tough break there. They had the jump on him. I thought Coughlin was going to be able to run that ball down. Perhaps fooled by the light air here, the way it carried, because it looked like he had a beat on him and then had to make a late adjustment. And may he seven. For nine in the series, and again, that's his first extra base hit of the year. He drives in three. I thought they had a play on him at third base, too. I knew they came into Castro. Did we say this is a good? Triples Park. Hmm. We've seen a few of them this weekend, haven't we? It's just so much real estate to cover. I mean, there have been some fly balls that have been up in the air for a long time, and guys getting to them, but taking forever covering all this ground. Yeah, and you just you, you have to make compromises defensively here. Whether you're going to bunch your outfielders, or take away the gaps, you, then you give the lines. You, you play a little shallower for a guy like Lemayhu who doesn't have good power. You run the risk of what just happened happening. There's a base hit for Blackman, four to one. Five hits this inning. Wow, I yeah, think that. That. that thing is ankle high. Almost threw his bat at it. Sure, Montero, who just went out to the mound, told Kyle, "Don't worry about that one." 
He made a good pitch. Yeah, you know, he's been up a little bit at times in these first couple of innings, but, but I think the message is probably, hey, let, you know, it's Coors Field. Don't panic. We're going to score you some runs. Castro essentially playing third base in the shift. Big inning for the Rockies. They get four to take a three run lead. That's for you. Shadow from the starlight is softer than a lullaby. Uncle Stops. John Deutschendorf. Huh? John Denver's real name. Do Deutschendorf? Is it? I didn't like know that. that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, there's a good documentary on him on TV a while back. Well, I gotta see that. Four to one, Rockies. Might not be a more appropriate nickname for a team in professional sports. This fits, right? The Rockies. Strike called on former Rocky, yeah. Jonathan Herrera. Maybe the Canadians. That works too, yeah. I'm not saying most nicknames are inappropriate, but this one fits. Maybe better than the Utah Jazz. <laughs> Another leadoff walk, second one in as many innings. A show that you bleed at Cubby Blue by becoming a member of the Cubs Club, the official fan club of the Chicago Cubs. Members will enjoy game day audio and exclusive perks throughout the 2015 Cubs season. Now is the perfect time to join, rejoin, or give a fellow Cubs fan the gift of a Cubs Club membership. Go to Cubs.com to join. Fowler takes a stroke. Are you ever a member of a fan club? I don't think I have been. No. You? I don't think so, no. Pitch one and two. 
Going to the 11th now in Cincinnati 5 5 Cardinals. And Reds. The Braves losing for the first time 4 3 to the Mets. Long pause by Lyles. On the ground backhanded play more no they get one that's going to be it as Fowler runs well that ball got out of play so that'll be an error allowing Dexter to go to second. Not quite sure why. Descalzo even made that throw with Fowler running right, but he did. Yeah. Bad decision. If the Cubs can take advantage. This play by Morneau they're getting the ball quickly to Descalzo. No way they're going to double up Fowler on a ball like that. Descalzo playing directly behind second base in the shift against Rizzo. And he fouls out of play. Well, first to third. The Tigers just blowing out everybody. See the Kansas City Royals off to a great start as well. And Atlanta Braves off to their best start in a couple of decades. And high expectations for that Atlanta team, but a good start. And the Royals, despite winning the American League pennant last year. There's a lot of people expected a significant drop off for them this year but obviously they have high expectations of themselves. So it looks like he's adopting a bit of an off field approach here. Take. Two and two. Henry wanted that ball in. Lyles just didn't trust himself. Didn't throw that pitch with conviction. He sailed it up and away. Interesting. Lyles, as I mentioned, when he first came into the league was. Fastball curveball primarily, and I don't know if we've seen a curveball yet today. A lot of changeups. Flyers, cutters, and two and four seam fastball. He was the youngest player in the majors at 20 when he made his debut at Wrigley Field. He was really good that day. Seven innings, two earned runs. Outside, and now he has run it full from 0 2 to 3 and 2. Here's a pitch. Popped in the left. Dickerson coming in. And he's got it. So two away, and it'll be up to Solaire.
big crowd. This has been a well attended opening series here in Denver. Over 93,000 combined in the first two games. And we look to be close to another sellout. Sun shining, temps mm -hmm. in the low 60s. Set a record uh, on Friday. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Cardinals have scored twice in the top of the 11th. And a two run homer by Matt Carpenter as they lead 7 to 5 at Cincinnati. You know, if they lost on Friday, they wouldn't be able to sell beer the rest of the year. Because they would have lost the opener. Oh, no. That's a good one. I think it was on a Dixie Cup. Fowler at second. There because the fielder's choice and an error. Moving with a swing, he'll score on any base hit, but that's a moot point. Second strikeout for Lyles, who leads four to one in the third. Cubs MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn more. Member FDIC. Arenado homered last night. Fouls away. Aggressive hitter. A good hitter. Franchise record 28 game hitting streak last year, the longest in big league baseball last year. Picked up by Castro. One away. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Rubber match today. Rockies won on Friday. The Cubs took game two last night. Morno base hit. Yeah, you kind of mentioned the factors here for, for Kyle. He's not a breaking ball pitcher. Fastball changeup guy, so you like that about pitching here, but 
It's the contact that you don't like, and he doesn't have any strikeouts. Yeah, he's not a swing and miss guy. The ball gets put in play against him, and kind of at the mercy of the conditions. That's why his start here last year was so impressive. Today they're finding the holes. And they're up there hacking because they know he's going to be around the plate. What was the fan graphs note Dickerson's opposite field ground ball rates like 20%. I'm shocked it's not 80%. He'll get out of play. Just about everything he has hit in this series, as you mentioned, has been to the other yeah, side well, of second I, I base. I would imagine this his spray chart would show a lot of balls hit the other way in the outfield and a fair bit on the infield too. And that's that's the kind of the anomaly, the fact that he hits the ball on the ground the other way that frequently because most guys don't hit ground balls the other way. Two strikes on him. Herrera over near the tarp, and he's got it. Battling that uh, high sky overhead has to find the tarp. Good concentration, good play. Castro reminding him, don't forget about the base runner. You know, I've taken a pretty sizable uh, break off of first base after the catch. Henry, a single and a run in the second. Seven hits for the Rockies here in these first three innings. All singles but the three run triple by LeMahieu in the second. Strike three called the first one of the day for Hendricks. It's four to one rocks after three.
system. Maybe the top prospect in the game today, Chris Bryant, with a long home run last night in Memphis. And he is actually homered again today, as has Addison Russell, his first of the year. As Iowa leads at Memphis 6 to 2 late. Kyle Schwarber with his first to double A home run yesterday as well. Okay, so those three top prospects. Chris Bryant has, I guess, what you would call easy power. Talk about pitchers who look effortless and throw 95 miles an hour. You see Bryant sometimes just takes a nice, easy pass. And 420 feet later, the ball lands. One and one on Chris Coglin. Leadoff walk and the Cubs long run in the second. Batting fourth in the lineup. After issuing leadoff walks in each of the last two innings, aggressive with that 2 1 fastball, Coglin with a pretty good hack at it, but couldn't put it in play. We've mentioned it throughout this series, the Rockies a little bit more aggressive with their defensive shifting this year. Descalso just on the second base side of the bag out there for Coglin. To Castro next. Henry calling for a change up there. A lot of confidence in the change up for Lyles. Here it comes again. Oh man. And I have quite as much confidence the next time he calls it. Third straight leadoff walk. The sense he didn't want to throw that pitch. Don't believe in a pitch, you're not going to execute the pitch. And again, after the leadoff walks in the second, third, I think he would have felt more comfortable with a challenge fastball there. Castro retired on a nice play by Arenado. Runner goes and he fouls, and what happened? McHenry lost his mask. Did he get hit on a backswing? I'm not sure. Even though down three, Joe Madden, he's thinking about staying out of a double play, so he turns Coglin loose. Yeah. Big swing by Castro on the follow through, gets a piece of McHenry. Left shoulder, backside. Left shoulder. Fort McHenry, they call him. So if that had been a swing and miss, I think uh, Coglin probably would have been sent back. We saw the other day that uh, that do over. Right. Well, the other piece of it too is, is McHenry is not a real good thrower. A good receiver, he blocks the ball well. So even if you put a hit and run play on and you get a swing and miss, you still feel like you got a pretty good chance of stealing a bag. Pretty good lead by Coglin. Time called as Lyles. Slowing it down with the runner on. Scalzo the flip, the Mayhew the turn, six to four to three. A 
time Coughlin not running and an easy double play for the Rockies. Montero with an RBI double his first hit of the season after starting 0 for 8. He's in the second. Strike call. Rockies thinking about their teammate and the teammate's son, more importantly, John Axford, who had uh, not appeared in this series, has been placed in the family medical emergency list. We told you the story the other day. His two year old son was bitten by a rattlesnake uh, during spring training. And some complications as a result. He's being moved to a hospital here in Denver, and Axford's going to take some time off to be with Jameson. I guess they found a staph infection. Mm. All kinds of stuff going on in the aftermath, and we certainly hope he's going to be all right. As Montero grounds out, inning over, four to one, Rockies in the fourth. Home to play the Reds and the Pods. Six games in seven days starting tomorrow night. And then back to the road in the National League Central. Ford America's best selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel efficient vehicles. Check out the entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. 789 for the Rockies, leading 4 to 1. Lester Arietta Wood for the Cubs in that set with the Reds. Leak, Usclafani, and Jason Marquis lined up to pitch for Cincinnati. So no Johnny Cueto. Funky spin on that bouncer, but they got him. Herrera to Rizzo. Cardinals held on seven to five in 11 innings at Cincinnati today. Take a look at our Xfinity speed replay. At the end of the bat, it's got some funky spin. Herrera has to contend with that. Quickly unloads. So the Reds, after winning four in a row, have dropped two straight. Former Cubs involved in the decision in that game. Carlos Villanueva got the win. Kevin Gregg. Took the loss. What? 
Strike three call to get Lyles. DJ LeMay, who is the second coming of Roy Hobbs here this weekend. For his defense. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, down there in the nine hole, the batting order. One line drive after another. There's a tell you, they get on a roll like this, they don't want to talk about it, they don't want to think about it, they just want to get in the box and hit. Another pitch to hit right here on 3 1. And he did. And he fouled. Well, definitely not as sharp today with his command as we've seen him. Up a little bit more than normal. And he got LeMahieu to end the inning. His first one, two, three of the afternoon, but he trails four to one. The curious bank. Cubs trail four to one. They only have one hit. That was the RBI double by Miguel Montero. They've had the leadoff man on via the walk in each of the last three innings. Cashed in Coughlin in the second have not been able to take advantage the last two times. With the 1 0. It's in there for a strike. He's trying to improve to 2 0. The winning in Milwaukee on Tuesday. Rockies will not get Jorge De La Rosa back this time through the rotation. He's on the DL with a strained groin. Christian Bergman will get the ball on Tuesday while De La Rosa will pitch one more time at AAA to build up his pitch count.
Contra hit 10 home runs with the Cubs last year. One of them came off of Jordan Lyles. So this is the 23rd season of Rockies baseball and I'm gathering in April of every season somebody has said it's all up to the Rockies pitching. Yeah it all comes down to the pitching. And that's Both so far as the pitching takes. Us. Yeah that's the case again this year. The Scalzo booted it. That is his second error of this game. Well that's true for so many teams you know you can. Typically, you can be a playoff team with just a so so offense as long as you pitch really well. Rarely does it happen the other way around where you're not a good pitching club, but you just outscore the opponent so frequently you manage to, to make it to the postseason. I guess it happens from time to time. Hendricks not showing, but ball one. I think I'd have him bunting because I'd be afraid of the double play ball. Yeah, he hit into a 6 3 his first time up. Runner goes, strike call, throw to second, late. Good break by Al Contra. We talked about McHenry and his skill set behind the plate. Uh, you know, a good mind back there calls a good game, blocks balls well, but generally below average in terms of his throwing. A 19% caught stealing from McHenry in his career, well below league average. So that's why Joe Madden didn't have the bunt on. He was just going to do a straight steal without Contra. Only the third stolen base for the Cubs this week, ninth of Al Contra's career. Bounced up the middle and through for a base hit. A contra coming around. Gary Jones sends him. He'll score. Kyle Hendricks with an RBI single. And that's the first RBI of his career. It's four to two. For good work. Let's take a look at the uh, Mazda replay. So they don't give up the out with the bunt. They let Alcantara steal second base. They let Hendricks swing the bat. And it all works out for the Cubs. Chopper back through the middle of the diamond. And take advantage of the error by Descalzo. The, the, the Rockies opening some doors here. Lyles with the leadoff walks and three consecutive innings. The error by Descalzo. Uh, pulls the bat back. Second RBI for Hendricks. He had one last year. So an unearned run. Two and zero on Herrera. It was signed by the Rockies out of Venezuela back in 2002. 419 major league games between the Rockies, the Red Sox, and now the Cubs. Two and one. Not a power guy, so taking all the way there on two balls and no strikes. Thirty years old, five nine one eighty switch hitter. There's the bunt. Henry pounces on it, safe. It's a hit. I'm trying to push this ball down a third base line. He didn't do that, but he deadened it. Found a nice landing spot out there where McHenry had to travel a bit to run it down, and with his speed, able to beat it. The Cubs making some noise here, getting some base runners at the bottom of the batting order. First and second, no outs. The 
Pitch to Fowler in the dirt. Change up today for Lyles at times has been very good. Other times it's kind of ugly. Two and zero. Oh. They got Lyles up against the ropes here. Right part of the lineup. Two men on, nobody out. Already a run in. This is the sort of inning, JD, that it feels like it may not be, but it feels like. It's going to be a key inning. Either they put up a huge crooked number here, or Lyles finds a way mm -hmm. to escape. Yeah, because he's clearly vulnerable, right? He you know, hasn't really thrown the ball where he's wanted to all inning long. 2-0 pitch to Fowler was out of the strokes strike zone high. Got him to chase. Him up. And that ball will drop. And everybody's going to be safe. Good read by Herrera. Really good read by Jonathan Herrera. He was the most vulnerable guy there to be thrown out. But he was almost to second base when that ball landed. There's a course field knock for you. Typically, a ball in the air this long is going to be caught by somebody. Four guys converging. Nobody takes charge. Hey, uh, folks, you can host your best customers and guests in a private suite at Wrigley Field. Uh, the Nuveen Investment Suites can accommodate anywhere from 15 to 55. Includes food, all you can drink beverages, and parking. To book your premier experience at the ballpark, visit cubs.com slash suites. It was also, J.D., an interesting read for the umpiring crew. I was looking around to see if anybody would put up the right arm, which they didn't. Because remember, it, it, the infield fly rule, the ball doesn't have to be on the infield, but... There was never a spot where an infielder kind of had his back right. to the outfield wall with an easy play. No, nobody ever got comfortably in position to make a play on that ball. So base is loaded. Here's Rizzo. Outside ball one. And see, this is this goes back to that conversation we've had frequently about protection in the lineup. And uh, when, when you're the big guy in the lineup, I don't think it's about the guy who's behind you. It's about the guys on, in front of you. If you put the pitcher in position with men on base where he feels like he has to try to get you out as opposed to tiptoe around you, that really plays to Rizzo's benefit. But Lyles, he's got to be thinking, you've got to be kidding me, man. E6, bunt single, pop up single. Another pop up. This time foul territory. And oh dropped my. by McHenry. Oh, a break. <laughs> oh, my. What was Lyle saying before? He's saying, You're killing me, fellas. Killing me softly. Oh, Roberta Flack. Again, that that's, you know, looks like an easy play. And obviously, it's an air. The ball's got to be caught. But it's, it's a tougher chance today with that sky and the wind. It's, it's windy here. Second life for Rizzo. Three Rockies errors today. Two in this inning. Lyles just hanging on for dear life. 
So this is as a pitcher where you have to continue to compete. Uh, you see some guys you see the body language and things are going wrong out there the, the shoulders slump a little bit and, and you'll kind of see oh, here it is and they'll just pump a fastball in there go ahead and hit it and they'll get frustrated. You just have to keep battling try to make pitches try to bail your guys out. Good change up again on a handful of 55 footers. Hendricks at third, Herrera second, Fowler first. One run in, nobody out. And a 2 2 to Rizzo and a fly ball to left. Hendricks ready to tag. On his way to the plate, other runners holding. Sack fly for Rizzo for three. That's better than a foul out to the catcher. Yep, stay inside the ball, get it airborne. Pick up an RBI. Hendricks, did he wait long enough? That I was think close. He did. Yeah. Rockies don't seem to be contemplating an appeal. Line shot out there, out at first. So they <laughs> lines into a double the one play. Hit ball in the inning. Going to escape, but usually it's somewhere in the middle. That's kind of what happened. They did get two, but had chances. Yeah, to get well, more. yeah, and, and, and the irony is that the, that struck ball of the inning turned into the line out double play. Bunt single, a blooper, an error, a dropped pop up, all kinds of bad stuff happening to Lyles, and it gives up a rocket and it turns into two outs. What? Cubs with two runs back in it down just to run here a lot of baseball yet to be played Hendricks has been good since giving up the four spot in the second. Coming off a one two three fourth. Third time through the order Blackman ball one. He's got two hits and an RBI picked off in the first. They call that a caught stealing. As he had made a move towards second. Oh, 
Two balls and a strike. Play the ninth in Arlington, 4 4. Astros and Rangers are tied. Davis just hit a grand slam for the Padres who lead the Giants four to two. Lead off walk. We're at both counts. Hendricks doesn't walk many. Blackman doesn't walk very often. He's gonna respond to the two spot the Cubs put on the board. Gonzalez has hit the ball on the ground twice. So that's enough to give Walt Weiss to start Blackman here. A miss by Gonzalez. Dodgers lead at Arizona 3-0. They're in the fifth inning there. I see how Puig has homered. It's his first of the year. Royals trying to go to 6 and 0 and they've got a 7 2 lead at the Angels. That is in the bottom of the sixth. Albert Pujols is homered. 5 22 yep. and by Ted Williams. Tied with Ted Williams, Willie McCovey, and Frank Thomas. And sole possession of 18th. Up there, hit a ton. Deep to center, Fowler will have to play off the wall. Blackman around third. He's going to score. It's a double for Carlos Gonzalez. It's 5 3. Ball is absolutely massacred for the 415 marker. Belly button high fastball right out over the heart of the plate. Gonzalez didn't hit for power last year. He had leg problems, a lot of problems, he had finger problems. The ball was really smoked. Not almost got hit by that pitch. And instead, it got the bat. It's a foul ball and makes it 0 and 2. Jason Mott. This is only the 14th career start for Hendricks, but this is a career high in runs allowed. Fly ball to deep center. Fowler back is Gonzalez ready to tag. One away, runner at third. Arenado, nothing for three today, but he's had good swings. Rocket to right first time up. A bit of a hanging breaking ball there, and Joe Madden's going to go ahead and make the move. So, pitching change here in the fifth. 
Rockies lead 5 3, threatening to get more, and we'll be right back. Cubs memorabilia. Visit Cubs.com slash Authentics to bid on weekly auction items including MLB authenticated game used baseballs, jerseys, bases, and much more. For more information, call 773-404-4753. All net proceeds of Cubs Authentics benefit Cubs charities. Here comes Jason Mott, the hard throwing right hander. He's worked a couple times so far and he's performed well. And on third, with just one out, more likely to get the strikeout from Mott than you would from Hendricks. That's probably part of the thinking. And we'll see how it plays out. Infield in. 96 with run on the corner. Talk about a lot. One of the challenges for a manager here in this ballpark, because it does yield so many runs, is, is how long do you stay with your starter? Because you know, sometimes you just have to live with giving up some runs. You have to really pay attention to not so much the result, but what, what's it look like coming out of the guy's hand? Popped him up. This is trouble. Yep. And it's caught by Alcantara, and Gonzalez did not tag. And halfway down the line, nicely done by Alcantara. As Soler was not going to get there. Cool as a cucumber, Alcantara under this one. This is not an easy play. Very windy conditions here today. And the sun. A factor at times as well. well Dickerson. Cheddar. Talking to Jason today, I said, when's the last time you didn't have a beard? And he could not remember. He said, my wife has never, ever seen me without a beard. I'm not sure he could pitch for the Yankees. I mean, he could, but you'd have to get rid of the beard. And that would be an issue. Well, caught by Herrera. So nice Mott with good work. 5-3 Rockies. Fear the beard. <laughs>
in the top half of the six five to three the Rockies lead Kyle Hendricks day is done. And Joe Madden. And a little chat with his young right hander. And Jordan Lyles the Rockies young right hander still in the ball game. Coglin has walked twice and he drives that one out into very deep center back toward the wall and right off the wall a double. Well that is. Deepest part of this ballpark and he nearly hit another one. That area last night for his first of the year. Hey boys well, got that good stroke middle of the field. Normally, you think of Coglin as a, you know more of a single doubles kind of guy, but an occasional pop, nine home runs last year, and that, that's up against that win too. We got to remember that, that win probably knocked that one down a little bit on a calmer day. It probably flies out of here. Brooks Brown is up. Darren Holmes, a bullpen coach, watching. Tying run at the plate. Still a lot of time, a lot of outs to go. We're only in the sixth. Chop to Arenado, plays the short hop, looks back the runner, throws out Castro. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. Trail by two. Chris Coglin is second with one out here in the sixth. There goes Coglin, throw to third, safe. Second steal for the Cubs in as many innings. Yeah, good heads up play by Coglin. Castro not able to get him over. Takes matters into his own hands. Miles never looked back. That's a dangerous play with a left handed hitter in the box. The catcher's got a clean look at you, but Coglin with good feel, it's an important steal. A good change up by Lyles just catches that outside corner. Perhaps. One and two on the two time all star catcher. He feels bad, got to put it in play here. He does, but he lines out. Oh, oh. The paradox that is this game of baseball. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll go down as one of those things. Well, uh, Montero didn't get the job done with a man on third and less than two outs. Well, he he did what you're supposed to do. Hit the ball hard. Just a tough break for him. Maybe he looked like a. A soccer goalie defending a penalty kick. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Ryan Schlitter is up. Joined the team on Friday when Justin Grimm went to the DL. You seen that uh, internet parody? The uh, Soccer goalie that keeps getting hit in the face with the ball. <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> Sounds right up my alley, He's though. To crawl off the field and they're doing penalty kicks. And 
think the last one hits the bar and then right straight down his face. Speaking of goaltenders, we'll wait and see how this what happens with this pitch. Did uh, you follow college hockey at all? I saw the video. Did you see the video they yeah. the, the game time goal in the Providence BU game. So he had it in his glove. He was just going to drop yeah, it to the ice. Yeah, flipped it in from like center ice. Had it in his glove. Somehow it trickled out of his glove between his legs and into the goal. A lot of Chicago sports fans in town this weekend. Cubs fans and Blackhawks fans as well. They're out and about after the two games last night. Andy with the chance to be a hero here. Cash in this leadoff double with two outs. Not goal is Lyles with a good heater to get him. Still 5 3. Field and enjoy special perks only available inside the ballpark. The Cubs offer special ticket packages for groups of 15 or more. Call the group sales office at 773 404 4242 or visit cubs.com slash groups. They'll hook you up. Lot continues on. Final two outs of the fifth inning. Jordan Lyles probably done six innings in the bank, 98 pitches. And his spot due up third this inning. As McHenry let go of the bat on this foul out to Rizzo. And a fair number of pitches made under duress by Lyles, too. I would assume he's done. And he hung in there. Can't find the bat. Not sure where the ball is. Lean Rosario now on deck for Lyles. His Descalzo bats. And he looks at a strike. Fun watching Jason Mott between pitches. Frenetic. Tugging at his jersey, his the bill of his cap, and flips the ball. Cutter that time inside. Wipes his neck, his brow, tug on the cap, the little flip, the little tug. And the jersey.
Punch the other way in the air, and Coglin's there to make the catch. Four outs recorded by Mott all in the air. No real hard contact yet off him. Yeah, he's he's got a lot of energy out there. UConn Cornelius Beard going. Fun guy, a lot of personality. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's on the charter the other day, rocking the bow tie. Drop down there. Turned in the arm angle. Swinging it up there at 93 at the knees. We'll get down for Rosario, who will make the turn. And a pinch double. Keep the inning alive for LeMahieu. Last guy the Cubs want to see in this spot. Rosario, good fastball hitter, really good against left handed pitching. Bazio. They want to go over the scouting report and the game plan against LeMahieu. A DJ is probably not used to inducing a lot of these type meetings. I mean, he's not considered a very dangerous hitter, but the way he's swinging it right now, it's worth talking it over. I did get him last time, caught looking at a borderline pitch. But, uh, most part throughout this weekend, man, that the barrel of that bat has found the backside of that baseball when he's been in the box. Hey, you an LSU product. In the Detroit area, went to Brother Rice High School in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Second round pick of the Cubs in 09. Traded here in December of 2011. One ball, no strikes. Beautiful view there. Coors Field and the bright blue sky above. See the snow capped. Rockies in the background. A little harder to see him now with all these new condo developments. And Mayhew was tardy that time, one and two. I do like the idea of Jason Mott replacing Kyle Hendricks. From 87 to 97 with the fastball. Yeah, the hitters have to dial it up a bit to try to catch up to Mott. Put it in a good spot. Reference Mott's short arm delivery as a former catcher. When he pitches, you can kind of see mm -hmm. a catcher throwing to second yep. base. Yep. Got similar throwing action. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good work by Jason Mott. Take it away, Joe Walsh.
by Mickey Chance. Travis Wood pinch hitting a big cut. Hashtag WGN Cubs for your selfies in future fan cam segments. Adam Ottavino the new pitcher. This is a tough assignment here for any right handed hitter. Cubs limited today Tommy Lestella has got a little bit of a a rib cage injury. And Travis Wood will be used as a pinch hitter from time to time this year. Joe Madden has already stated that, done that. And both of his home runs in spring training were as a pinch hitter. Swing and a miss, strike three. To lean on his second straight game, scoreless ninth last night. His team trailing. Herrera has walked and bunted his way on one for one. The left field line now into foul territory goes Dickerson for the catch. One on Fowler. Onovino starts from the extreme first base side of the rubber, steps across his body, and really creates some tough angles for right handed hitters. He's got a lot better look at him. Bouncer to LeMayhew, and Fowler's on. Some guys backhand that ball. I mean, he got in front of it. it. Looked like the ball may have hit the heel of his glove. Yeah, I think he, he might might have been in a better position to feel the ball on the backhand side. He works real hard to try to get in front of it, and set up to make a throw. He knows he's got Fowler going down the line, so that plays into it as well. If the Gold Glover draws an error. It's four errors on the Rockies today, and they lead by two. Yeah, you, you make four errors in this ballpark and. More often than not, you're giving up eight or nine runs. Fowler's going to take second without a throw. Third steal for the Cubs. Yeah, that, that's again, that's a scouting report steal. That, that's just Joe Madden knowing that Dexter Fowler can steal a base on this combination of Ottavino. And McHenry because the game situation says don't take any chances with Rizzo up there and you're down two. Madden so confident that Fowler could get the back. Turns him loose. Last year left handed hitters batted 347. Against Ottavino. Hitters count here for Rizzo. By the way, the fan cam, it was Milky Chance, not Mickey. I don't know why you didn't correct me. Uh, mm, I just, I didn't want to show you up with my deep musical knowledge. Very few of us are familiar with Milky.
There's something you don't see every day. A ball hit by a left handed hitter over the roof on a pull side between home and first. Left the action in the bullpen. This is a risky proposition for Walt Weiss leaving out of Vino in there to face Rizzo. Boone Logan. Kick and the 2 2 to Rizzo, it's too low. George Springer took away what would have been a game ending grand slam in Arlington. We're now in the 11th inning, Astros and Rangers. 4 4. Springer shows up on the highlight reels a lot. Yeah. It was Leonis uh, Martin who hit the ball. Nasty pitch was it on the plate or not? Oh wow, justifiable. So stand by Rizzo took it. We're going to keep it here for God Bless America. Five three Rockies. As we honor our great country by the performance of God Bless America. Performing God Bless America today, representing the United States Air Force Academy Band, is Senior Airman Adrian Holton. Please welcome Senior Airman Holton and join him by singing along to God Bless America.
Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Ford, America's best-selling brand, inviting you to go further in our fuel-efficient vehicles. Check out our entire lineup at your Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Subway, make a smart play for savory subs this season. Score more flavor at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. TrustedChoice.com for all your insurance needs. Honda Dream Garage Sales Event, now at your Honda dealer. And by Budweiser, still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. Phil Coke is on, facing Charlie Blackman in a strike called. It's late, and it's 5-3 to three Rockies. First year's a cup for Coke. The lefties to get things started here for the Rockies, so Coke gets the call. He's I'm going to call three times previously already this year. First two were good. Yesterday allowed a couple of hits and a run in one third of an inning. Blackman's been on base all three times today. Mystic young man. Coke from Sonora, California. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Jason Mott was really good today. An inning in two thirds, he allowed a hit, no runs, had a strikeout. Branded to Carlos Gonzalez at third base in the fifth. Mentioned uh, last night, Coke was drafted follow uh, back in 2002. He actually got into the top 10 prospects list in the Yankees organization by uh, 2009. Doesn't waste any time. Outside one and two. Gonzalez with an RBI double in the fifth. Whoa. Look out as he goes down to his backside. And an up and in fastball. Did not feel too good when he hit the dirt, but probably better than it would have felt if he had been hit by the pitch. Yeah, you see Montero up out of his crouch asking for that high fastball. It was high, but. Under the chin of Gonzalez, you see Coke. He, he was upset about not as upset as Gonzalez. That's no fun for anybody. Well, test your metal after one of those to try to hang in there. The only infielder to the left of second. With the third baseman Herrera over with Alcantara and Rizzo. A shrug of the shoulders before Coke delivers. Coglin in, he's got it. 
Clark, the official team mascot of the Cubs, can be part of your next gathering from charity events and wedding receptions to birthday parties and grand openings. Clark wants to be part of it. Email him directly at Clark at Cubs.com or visit Cubs.com slash Clark for more information on how to book him for your special event. Do you know what happened on this date in 1999? I don't. The Rangers called Jeff Zimmerman up from Oklahoma City. Noteworthy because it became the first team since the 1916 Cubs to have three players with the last name beginning with Z. Todd Zeal. Todd Zeal. And Greg Zahn are also on that club. Nice. Now, you really go to the head of the class if you know the three Zs on the 1916 Dutch Cubs. Dutch Swilling? <laughs> yes. Okay. I know that's all I know. Heine Zimmerman. Okay. And Raleigh Zelder. Or Zider, excuse me. Well, Zider. Dutch Swilling is the last name in the baseball registry, alphabetically. ZW is hard to top. So if you go David Artsma to Dutch, Dutch Swilling, you've got every major yeah, league. Everybody in played. between. One and one on Arenado. Well, for three today for Arenado, but he's had good swings. Over. Mott and Coke have done their job to keep the Cubs within two. Summary. Another big day for the former Cub, DJ LeMayhew. The biggest hit of the game, a three run triple in the second inning. As the Cubs find themselves down two with six outs to go, Honda Dream Garage Sales Event. Now it's your Honda dealer, Red Rocks. One of the iconic concert venues in the country. Jorge Soler, high drive out into deep left center. Dickerson has it on the warning track. A long fly out for Soler. 
Tries to swing the bat against this tough right hander out of Vino. The ball just kept carrying and carrying high enough. But Dickerson was able to ultimately run under it, put it away. Coglin, the scheduled hitter. Looks like it's going to be Boone Logan. So pitching change here in the top of the eighth. The Rockies leading the Cubs by two. So see good go place there to work exercise, out. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ryan Dempster used to go there all the time in the offseason workout. Here's Boone Logan, Southpaw. And he will not face Coglin. It'll be Matt Caesar to pinch hit. Caesar had a pinch double in the ball game yesterday. The veteran left hander has worked twice so far for the Rockies. In his career, right handed batter is about 40 points better. Against Logan. Bloop and a blast, and the ball game is tied. Caesar's job get on base. Any which way. Three and oh. Taking all the way here. Right down the middle at the knees. The final in Anaheim, nine two Royals. Kansas City matching the Tigers first week. Each team six and all atop the AL Central. Now tip strike two. Get him. 
good aggressive break on that ball by Arenado. If Descalzo handles that one, Caesar might beat it. Starlin's 0 for 3 today. On the ground all three times, including a double playground ball back in the fourth. Looks to me like he's trying to lift the ball, kind of pulling off the ball. Might be maybe uh, getting caught up in the light air here. You see it a lot from hitters over swinging in this park. Understand why you get at altitude. You only got one trip a year here. You want to do some damage. <laughs> oh, and two on Castro, Montero on deck. Good call. Rob Drake, first base umpire. One, two pitch. Squid to first. Morno tags him for the out. We got assisted. To end the inning. Cubs go down in order in the eighth. Five to three Rockies. MLB.TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch every out-of-market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. MLB.TV for details. Bill Coke continues on, at least for one hitter, facing Justin Morneau. Bottom of the eight. Another lefty on deck, Dickerson. How about this? Mm -hmm. Infielder Don Kelly, backup catcher Jeff Mathis, both left the Marlins game today with the same injury a broken right ring finger. Kelly was injured. At third base while feeling a grounder. Mathis got hit by a foul ball. 
They're both going to the DL. Isn't that odd? Two separate injuries, same, same exact injury. Finger, yeah. Teammates. The Rays won the game eight to five. Miami now one and five to start the season. Speaking of which, I was reading, I can't remember if it was uh, Cargo's injury or Lyle's uh, broken mallet finger. It's a mallet finger. Don't know. Rizzo will beat Mono to the bag. That's an actual injury. Right? I don't think that's a specific no, okay, finger. mallet finger. Right? It's an injury. Just googled it here. And when I read it, they referred to it as a mallet finger. I thought, oh, just, oh my goodness. Yeah, the, uh, the the tip of the finger bends down, but the rest of the finger stays straight. So sometimes referred to as baseball finger. There you go. How about that, according to Ortho Info. Is that would so the, is the idea that if somebody hits your finger with a mallet, that's what it would look like? <laughs> it's an injury to the tendon that straightens the end joint of a finger or thumb. Opposite field into the corner for Dickerson as he makes his way to second. It is tenth hit of the week. Slogan is go to left, young man. It's every ball he's hit in that direction. And why not? It's working for him. Right-handed hitter is due up. That's McHenry. Joe's going to make a change. Bottom of the eight, five-three Rockies. We'll be right back. Here in the eighth inning. Three trips to the mound so far this year for uh, for Neil, including uh, yesterday, he allowed a run in one inning of work in the Cubs' nine to five win. Yesterday here at Coors Field, he walked a couple out of strikeout.
50 games and a 144 ERA last year. And his first offering is a fastball on the inside corner for a strike. Ramirez, a native of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Dickerson at second. Strike call, 0 and 2. Ramirez, kind of an old fashioned drop and drive style pitcher, really breaks down that back leg. Strike three call. So McHenry who did swing the bat. Two down. On well, the inside corner and then a breaking ball to the outside edge. So Montero, Alcantara, and a pinch hitter due for the Cubs in the top of the ninth. Walt Weiss wins this one. He'll feel like he got away with something. His yep. club has committed four errors here this afternoon. Starting pitcher Jordan Lyles walked a leadoff man in three consecutive innings. Hold out of play. I keep going back to that four run inning that the Rockies had. Descalzo hit that ground ball up the middle. Kyle Hendricks had left it alone. It would have been an easy double play. Would have ended the inning. The Rockies wouldn't have scored. But such is the nature of baseball. Well, Pop, hey, make a play toward us. Also, he's, he's kind of like uh, duct tape. He's got a lot of uses. Plays all over the field, all over the infield, and go out and trot around the outfield if you need him to. He's also he's pitched. He's one of the emergency pitcher for the Cardinals. And blowout situation. For Madden and Mike Borzello talking things over. Away from Montero, wild pitch allows Dickerson to advance to third. And here's the play I'm talking about. Yep, round ball up the middle. Castro was shaded that way to begin with. Would have been an easy step on the back throw to first double play. And he went around. And the inning is over. So Ramirez with a couple of strikeouts. We go to the ninth. Last chance. Cubs down two.
five to three the Rockies have the lead as JD mentioned. In spite of four errors by the home team. So Boone Logan is going to face Montero with with Troy Hawkins continuing to throw in the bullpen. Lefty versus lefty in a strike on Montero Alcantara on deck and a pinch hitter. The question is. Is Mike Olt available. Tommy Listello. Or would it be one of the backup yeah, catchers? I'm today? Probably Welly. Inside on Montero. Two balls and a strike. Dinger. The Rockies mascot. Montero double and an RBI first time up last time up. With Chris Coughlin on third base and one out he hit a bullet. On a line to second base LeMahieu made a nice play on him. I think Mike old. Has his batting helmet on and a bat in the dugout does not mean he's going to hit necessarily. A lot of times managers will have guys who may not be available look like they're ready to hit just to give that other manager something to think about the pitch strike three looking no argument from Montero it's a good pitch yeah late breaking uh, slider on the inside part of the plate. Now it will be Latroy Hawkins' time. So the former Cub will come on, try to get a two out save when we return. Tavino hit Mike Olt on the right wrist. X rays were negative, felt a lot better this morning. So he's in the dugout. We're not sure if he really is available or not. Alcantara is going to bat left handed against Latroy Hawkins. Wellington Castillo is now on deck. Oldest player. In the majors currently at 42 years old. They viewed with the Minnesota Twins back in 1995. 
He was a starter back then. He's been a lot better as a reliever in his career. Pitch is a strike to Alcantara. So 98 career starts for Hawkins, a 6.11 earned run average, 904 relief appearances, 3.33. Contra able to hold up on the check swing, two balls and a strike. Got to get somebody on to get that tying run to the plate. Now he doesn't have a, an electric fastball like a lot of closers, but still can be up there 92, 3, 4 on occasion. Three and one. And we'll put him in a box here and make sure if you're going to swing it bat, it's got to be right there in your wheelhouse. He walked him. Alcantara's taken three walks here the last couple of days. And now it will be Michael. I think I think Joe is going to base his decision on whether Alcantara reached or not. Old more likely to pop one out of here and tie the ball game. It's interesting looking at Hawkins' numbers again. A lot of those starts, most of them were. Early in his career, he gave up 85 home runs and 518 plus innings as a starter. As a reliever, over 900 innings, 74 homers. So he had a hard time keeping it in the yard as a starter, but has done a much better job in relief over the years. It gets away and allows Alcantara to advance to second. Does take away the double play chance here for the Rockies. Coughlin went back to back last night after Coughlin went deep Olton hit one into the back of the bullpen. Right central. One and one. from Gary, Indiana, went to West Side High School. Elevated fastball. Normally, you don't get that one called. Eric Cooper. Called a few of them up there this afternoon. One and two on Olt. The pitch. Two and two. Just in case. It's uh, Pedro Stroke. Strike three, 42, and still throwing 95 miles an hour. A lot of work at the top of the zone with a four seam fastball. One called up there, and here he gets a swing through from Old. Looks like he was favoring that hand a little bit.
Pass steal for Herrera. All the way. Tough assignment here for Castillo. And had many plate appearances here in the early going. Comes in with the game on the line in the ninth. Shadows coming across the infield. Hubs will head home either three and two or two and three. Depending on what happens here in this ninth inning. I think we take 95 for granted, but a 42 year old guy throwing that hard. Yeah, he's finding a little extra here today. I don't think he threw 95 very often last year. His average velocity, according to fan graphs, is 92. Yeah, why retire, Latroy? You're still throwing 95. There's a base hit to keep the Cubs alive. Alcantara will score. It's five to four. Now is there a pinch run? Yeah, I'm thinking here. that. Would you? Travis Wood has already pinch hit. And on top of that high fastball, Lestella. Be the option of the position players. You're not going to run David Ross. Use Hamill or Lester. <laughs> Just going mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. Marietta. No, you probably wouldn't want to use them. So it is going to be Castillo, the runner first. Fowler takes a strike. Extra one out of four today. A big day yesterday, including a couple of triples. Blew a save on uh, Wednesday in Milwaukee, but got the win. Milwaukee scored in the tenth. The 0 1 to Fowler. Fouled. With an 0-2. Drive to right. Way back. Cubs lead. Dexter Fowler with a two-run homer. Oh, baby. Six to five. How sweet does that feel for the former Rocky? Big day yesterday. Big swing of the bat here this afternoon, and the Cubs have the lead. Wow. Talk about getting up off the deck. No balls, two strikes. <laughs> no doubt about it. A stunned crowd here at Coors Field. Now Rizzo. Ball one. Welcome home, young yes, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> that is good stuff. I was just getting ready to say, boy, well, he better get a good jump in case there's an extra base hit. Now you can just jog. Mm -hmm. 
That was not a light air home run. No. Nope. We see Troy Tulowitzki in the bottom of the ninth. And it will probably be, be Hector Rondon on the mound. The pinch hitter, then LeMahieu, then Blackman do up for the Rockies. All strike three. So Rondon getting ready for the bottom of the ninth. A shocking turn of events as Dexter Fowler, the former Rocky, gives the Cubs the lead. of triples in the Cubs victory a flair for the dramatic today a two out two run homer to give the Cubs the lead pinch hit single by Wellington Castillo and here's Troy Tulowitzki off the bench pinch hitting and against Hector Rondon 98 to start the bottom of the night Scoreless night for Rondon yesterday, including a strikeout of Tulowitzki, so he's on for the fourth time in pursuit of his second save. Swing and a miss. Michael playing third. Well, what a win this would be. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him to chase a breaking ball. Lewinsky, one of the best hitters in the league, but that, again, that's such a tough assignment, especially for guys who aren't used to coming off the bench. Great execution by Rondon. LeMayhew. 
One ball, one strike. Mott, Cope, Ramirez, all solid in relief. Bounced right to Alcantara. Showed it up the middle, two away. Yeah, that often gets lost in the shuffle when you come back late. The fact that the bullpen kept it a two run game. Yeah. Kyle Hendricks went four and a third today. And Jason Mott came into the ball game. There was a man standing on third base with just one out. He stranded to Gonzalez. The guys out of the pen have fallen in line with good work this afternoon. Blackman into the corner and he's going to get into scoring position. That is a two-out double. Fourth time he's been on. It's his third hit today. Yeah, they come in bunches for Charlie Blackman. Not a guy who walks a lot, but a high average hitter, so it's him a good fit at the top of the order. He also has power. Well, here we go with cargo up. High run at second base. Arenado on deck. Rondon against Gonzalez. Blackman takes off for third. No throw. From Montero. That's an interesting play. Well, I think it's because of the shift. Just figured I could beat Casper to third. See how far Starlin is off the bag. Now tipped into the goal. One and one. Early season drama. Coming back with three runs in the top of this ninth inning. Take a 6-5 lead. Tying run is 90 feet away with two outs. A little extra pressure on Montero. Strike two. Well, Castro way off third. And I think Stu Cole is going to tell Charlie Blackman, you Far down the line as you possibly can. Yeah, now the no, Cubs are yeah. telling Starlin, you gotta no, just, just gotta check on just him. to honor that. Just to... way high. You don't want Rondon distracted by that base runner two thirds of the way down the third baseline. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch popped him up. Now Contra calling for it. He's got it. Cubs win. Dexter Fowler with a game-winning homer. The ex-Rocky beats the ex-Cub, Latroy Hawkins, with that dramatic two-run homer to win it. Boy, what a finish. Cubs put three on the board in the top of the ninth. Fowler with the big swing, and then the Rockies with the tying run in scoring position in the bottom half, but Rondon stands tall. That's a nice W. What a ball game. So, our next telecast of Cubs baseball will be Wednesday on WPWR. Reds and Cubs at 7 o'clock Central. Once again, the final today Cubs 6, Rockies 5. Cubs baseball in high definition on WGN has been brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Stay tuned. We'll have the 10th inning show next.